This is Sarah, and the end of this year, 2020, seems to be all about demons. Confronting, addressing, accepting, just dealing with inner demons. Back when I was a student in college, I received sagely advice that the best way to improve as a roboticist or a maker of shapes is to take something that I admire in, in life, like a mechanism or something, and try to replicate it on my own. Through the process of creating that thing and having to wrap my head around how it works, I uh, would come to understand it, and then I could add that understanding to my arsenal of design abilities. And uh, lately, I've been meaning to brush up on my CAD skills. Because if I were to be completely honest with myself, there's this whole gamut of uh, tools in Fusion 360, in like the forbidden drop-down menu that I avoid like the plague. I set out to uh, create a shape that would be a catalyst for me to learn many of those tools. So the shape in question is this offhand item that my character from a popular MMO uses. It's a uh, lantern. This character of mine is a warlock who summons and suppresses demons to do their bidding. And in my imagination, I like to think that this lantern that they carry around is the thing that all of the demons are sort of harnessed within. It's like a demon cage. As an adult, my definition of what constitutes as a demon has kind of shifted to be a bit more abstract. Instead of it being like an individual that is specifically summoned from another plane of existence, I have come to think of demons as the negative thoughts about ourselves or the world that we have to carry around with us and kind of parse on a daily basis. And I think that right now I'm having to suppress in contain a lot of my own demons, and I'm in need of my own demon cage, or demon lantern. <laughs> so I did have to learn some of those terrifying Fusion 360 tools to create this lantern, which was the whole point. The entire thing was created so that it could be taken apart, printed, and then reassembled after it was printed. Because as you know, 3D printed parts have to have one face that makes contact with the print bed. And while it's printing, the part can't fail, so it can't defy physics in some freakish way. To pull this off, a lot of my parts had to slot together. This meant that one part needed to overlap another part in some way so that I could subtract one from the other and create like a little cavity or recess. The cavity or recess that was meant to slot over the other part had to have an anti-kerf applied to it because, as you know, when you print something, it's usually slightly larger than whatever the dimensions are in your CAD design. It has to do with filament and stuff. My printer happens to have a 0.25 millimeter anti-kerf, so anytime I created a recess where one part fit on top of another, I had to make sure I shaved that much off so that the two would actually, like, fit. I used this most effectively with the cage on the inside of the lantern where the horizontal bars overlap the vertical bars to create the handle, the circular handle with all the little like points that fit around it ever so nicely like beads and where those spiky stabby outer arms slot into the upper and lower ring of that cage. The whole design kind of just compresses together and keeps itself in one shape without the use of very much hardware, which I'm kind of proud of. To actually make the vessel look like the sort of thing that would contain demons, there were a bunch of different technical skills I implemented. After my parts were printed, the first thing I did was gesso all of them. What is gesso? It's basically canvas primer, and you can buy it from an art store in uh, transparent, and then literally put it on any surface and make it something that paint will stick to. And the difference between feeling like you're painting on a plastic bag versus painting on a paper towel. Since this is the era of COVID, the only color of metallic paint I had was bronze, which wasn't exactly what I wanted, but I decided to go with it. It was pretty uh, yellowy yellow, green, yellow. So I decided to desaturate the bronze color with 
multiple layers of stain. Stain is basically acrylic paint watered down with water that you build up in layers on top of a surface. And it ends up looking like, I don't know, weathered, which is good. To get the appearance of wood on the uh, base structure of the lantern, I used baby powder mixed with acrylic paint. If you want to create the appearance of stone or wood or grime or dirt caked on the outside of something, mix baby powder with your acrylic paint until it's a thick consistency, almost like brownie batter, like a paste, and then slather that on your surface to the desired chunkiness and let it dry. When you're adding weathered effect to a surface, it's best to work from dark to light. I like to use a dry brushing technique on top of a darker color, which is basically loading a paintbrush with only a small amount of paint and just dusting it on top and building it up in layers. After you get the correct appearance for your surface, you can then add additional layers of stain. The lantern in the game has like crappy fabric wrapped around those bars <laughs> and the handle. I decided to go with some magenta colored matte fabric, which is again, all I had on hand. I cut some long strips, I sanded the edges so that they'd be nice and frayed, and then I stained those as well with some watercolor. So for the actual electronics that go inside of the thing that make it light up and, and do its lantern-y thing, I was able to use some of my extra calamari LED boards from the suck choker, those little light rings that went inside of the uh, suction nodules, as well as the uh, controller board uh, called the taco. I mounted one of the tacos inside the base of the lantern and then used two of those calamari rings facing inwards towards each other, like kind of like an apple core. I used a piece of semi-transparent gray plastic uh, inside of the lantern cage as my light diffuser. I shoved the LED apple core up inside of the lantern and Mark helped me wire up a USB cable to the power plug thingy that goes into the taco. And I routed that up through the top so that I can plug my lantern into a USB hole and power it. So if I hang that thing next to my computer desk, it can just be a permanent fixture next to my head. So in closing, I created an object that otherwise wouldn't exist in the world, and in so doing, learned a bunch more tools in Fusion 360 that I tend to avoid. I have my demon lantern, so I'm going to say that this project was a success so far. But I haven't actually put my demons in the lantern. That's something else. But I can talk about all of that, that demon pushing inside of lantern doing for another eight minutes or so, so I'm gonna make that into its own segment. Until I get around to posting all of that, keep making awesome stuff out there, continue to forge the future that you want to live in, wear a mask on your face, and thank you for watching.